So far in my Serbia series, we've scaled brutalist architecture in Belgrade, marvelled at the divine city of Subotica, been caught in an endless downpour in Novosad and Sombor, and explored the history of Zastava in Kragujevac. As well as being blown away by the fiery colours of the autumnal countryside on the Shagan 8 train, and at a secluded monastery near Vinabashta. Next time we'll be in Krushevac and Nish, but today we're back in Western Serbia. We've already seen Užice's magnificent fortress, perched atop a rocky precipice, and eaten at the famous Šuljage. But this time we're going one step further. What else is there to discover in Užice? And what can you find just a short bus ride away in Kadinjača? Let's find out! Good morning everyone. Does this look familiar? It should do because yes, we're in Užice again. I bet you thought you'd seen the back of Užice, right? Since the last video, but I've never left, right? So all this time I've been staying in Užice. And in the last video, I did say that I wanted to do another one because there were a few things in that video I didn't get a chance to do. So here we are. We're at Velina Brana. The big dam, or should I say, dam! Someone's added an N. Oh my god, you can't really see because of the sun. It's a good job I already flew the drone. This dam is to do with that hydroelectric power station. I think it dates back to like the early 1900s. And it's obviously very much connected to Nikola Tesla and everything. You've got these wonderful views, these lovely greens, bridges in the distance. And basically it's located a little bit further on from where I was in the last video. I got to tunnel number 13, this one is 14, and the dam is just over there. I don't know if there's any way of getting closer, but I think there could be a possibility down here. Tunnel number 14, it looks very long and dark, but we're not gonna go through there because basically all it is is just the old tunnels going along the Jatinia River. But there is a hiking trail, 8.5 kilometers all the way up there, Needle Rock. I've got time to do that today, and to be honest, I can't be bothered. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna go down here instead, because as I was looking at that map, I noticed a little staircase. Surely this must go somewhere, the river is down there. So there's these old buildings down here, but I can hear sort of, is it like electricity noise coming from them? I don't know. Okay, this could still be an epic fail, because there's barbed wire there, and there's like a ledge down there, and then the river, Lovely, but look at this. Oh yes, here we go. This could be success. That thing kind of looks like an old unexploded World War II bomb. A doodle bug, whatever that was. Um, obviously it's not, it's, I guess it's some sort of pipe where, I don't know, water comes out, I don't know, who knows. Oh shit, I almost twisted my ankle. Oh, this looks pretty from here, doesn't it? Ah, pipe gate 2021. Am I actually walking across a pipe? I've got to go under this tree. Ugh, it's like the crystal maze. How pretty. It's probably not my best idea because obviously it's autumn. There are leaves that are falling off the trees, rocks, and uh, they're all covered in slippy moss. The worst. I've reached the limit of my exploration. Unless I develop the ability to walk on water, I can't go any further. Look at that. That's the furthest I can go, my ass. I just have to crawl up there on my hands and knees. Right, there's a little path up here that we can get closer to that waterfall and the dam. I think this is it, Hans. The big dam in Ujite. Did I tell you it's 18 metres tall? I can't remember. But there's a dam and a waterfall. I could go down there, but it just leads to the water. And up there, it just goes to the top of the dam. So this is the furthest you could get to. But look at this. 
and also look at that Let's try and get back to the center of Ujitsi without dying. We're gonna have some food. It's the same dish as I had last time, complet la piña, but it's at a different place. We're gonna compare with Shulyage. I'll see you there. I just teleported myself back to Partisans Square, nice, I think, Blue Moon, which is the other place for Complet La Pina, is up here and to the right, if my map is correct. Okay, I think it's actually down here. All right, is he gonna let me go? Yes, how about that? Nope, I was right the first time. It's down here. Oh, there it is. I see you, Blue Moon. Now we just gotta hope that it's open. Yep, it is. Good morning, good morning. I'm here, we have the Ciao, I've come out with takeaway because uh, copyrighted music can't film inside, so we'll sit down somewhere and see if this is up to the standard of <coughs> Shulyage. <laughs> this will do. As last time, I have yogurt, of course, and here is the complete Le Pina in here. Let's have a look. Oh, okay. Looks wise, it looks very similar. It smells very similar. Oh, and inside also looks exactly the same. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting. Right, let's see if it's any different after all. I did notice in the Blue Moon place, they didn't have like the wood burning oven thing that they had in Shulyage. It was much more, you know, it was more modern and a metal thing. This is classic me, kneeling on the ground eating. Okay, let's just dive in. Honestly, it tastes exactly the same. Is it that it's just one recipe that the Shulyage guys gave to Blue Moon? Yeah, there really is no different. Egg, climax, dripping top as always and I'm gonna do the thing that the guys were doing in the last place that I didn't do they were like dipping it in like whatever it doesn't make any difference to how it tastes okay after taking another bite I've realized perhaps there may be a little bit more egg on this and also it's a bit saltier than the Shulyage one which is good I like it I'm gonna miss who just say mainly because of this, but also everything else. That was nice, I'm nice and full now, it's just what I needed. We're um, going to the bus station, this is the last you'll see of Ujite, at least for now, you never know, I might be back. We're heading to our final spot, it's actually 30 minutes out of town, so let's go up this way. More Ujite murals, Miroslav, someone, I believe that's a basketball player. There are a lot of comments on the last video with the one around the corner of the football player. On the subject of Ujise, it has joined my list of top tier elite destinations. I shouldn't do this when I'm walking along roads. As in, it's one place I could quite happily see myself staying in for a long period. You know, it really makes a difference staying in a place for a long time because you can really get to know the place and it's just so me. It's quiet, it's small. It hasn't got that same kind of metropolis effect as somewhere like Belgrade. Not necessarily metropolis, but you know what I mean. A bigger city. But I've loved it. So, um, as you say, legendary. One of the top destinations ever. And this bus station, I feel like I've lived here the entire time. Because the amount of times I've gone to other places to film videos. And here I am again. I'm going to be here again in a couple of days when I leave, as you say, to head to Khrushchevas 
and niche. Okay, I've got about half an hour. A lot of bus stations in Serbia, you have to scan your little barcode to get into the actual bus area. And this bus is only 90 dinar, that's about 90 cents in US. It's the bus that's going to Vinabashta, but we're not going there, we've been there already. We're going to Kadinjaca. Here we are, I'm off the bus, by Nabashta, that way. Look at this view over here. Let's check the road. Once again, there's that mist and the wonderful autumnal colors. It's a bit grim at the moment. It was raining on the way here a little bit, but we've come here to see this. I've got a little dog friend. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh. It's quite literally a monumental monument concerning the workers' battalion of Ujice back in 1941. There was a battle here and it seems that the dog is going to come with us. So this huge monument in Kadinjaca is incredibly important in relation to Serbian history, and particularly this area. You might remember in the first Ujice video I briefly mentioned that Back in 1941, Užice became its own republic. I think it was called Užice Republika. However, that didn't last very long. Basically, it was the first area in Europe which gained freedom from Nazi occupying forces. And right here, there was a battle that was essentially like the final stand, I would say. The workers' battalion fought against advancing Nazi forces. And, of course, the Nazis retook this part of Serbia. They reoccupied Užice. So therefore this monument is here to commemorate those people that died in that battle. It's huge. So there's this part here with all these large concrete structures going all the way off into the distance. I believe the construction started here in 1952. I think it might have been that part with that bit in the middle. I think that's a crypt and it's got remains of the people that fought here underneath. The rest of this was then completed in 1979 and it was opened by Joseph Tito back then. This one here is probably the most prominent. It's a different design to the rest of them. I'm not sure what the significance of this is. I think it's good these things still exist, right? Because the younger generations, they wouldn't have a clue. I wouldn't have a clue. I wasn't alive back then in World War II. The way I look at it, it is quite bleak because I think of like World War One. there was the over the top thing where people, soldiers would be told to go over the top of the trenches and face the much superior advancing enemy where the only outcome would be death, certain death. How do you even compute that in your head? Coming to these places is important in Serbia because even though each of them, it's not commemorating exactly the same thing, it's all about commemorating the people that had to sacrifice themselves in such a horrendous way. What a setting. How fitting that I'm ending my time in Užice by the Užice sign. Welcome. Or should I say goodbye? I'll definitely be back here, I swear. It's also goodbye to this crazy mutt. Bye, Han. Right, the cars have gone past. I was going to say, there's a museum here as well, um, but as in Moklagora, I have about 10 minutes before the bus comes, so I haven't got time. Here's another car. Over the top, as in going over the top of the trenches. That's where that expression comes from, to go over the top, to be over the top, i.e. to act, behave, or react in an extreme manner, because going over the trenches was an extreme act. I didn't know that until... I googled it yesterday. So anyway, that is Ujitsi done. Not one video, but two. Western Serbia as a whole has been absolutely bloody brilliant and I'm looking forward to coming back. Next up, as I said, we're going to Krusevac and Niš. I've been to Niš before. I was there for three weeks in 2020 and I filmed two videos there. You can check them out in the Balkans playlist. 
stay tuned for that if you want to see them don't forget to subscribe like comment everything check out the end screens at the end and i will see you next time where's the dog it's gone finally i'll catch you later <laughs>